O oh, to what purpose dost thou hoard thy words, that thou returnst no greeting to thy friends? I have too few to take my leave of you, when the tongue's office should be prodigal to breathe the abundant dolor of the heart. Thy grief is but thy absence for a time. Joy absent, grief is present for that time. What is six winters? They are quickly gone. To men in joy, but grief makes one hour ten. Call it a travel that thou takes for pleasure. My heart will sigh when I miscall it so, which finds it an enforced pilgrimage. Sullen passage of thy weary steps. Esteem as foil, wherein thou art to set the precious jewel of thy home return. Nay, rather every tedious stride I make will but remember me what a deal of world I wander from the jewels that I love. All places that the eye of heaven visits are to a wise man ports and happy havens. Teach thy necessity to reason thus. There is no virtue like necessity. Think not the king did banish thee, but thou the king. Look what thy soul holds dear. Imagine it to lie that way thou goest, not whence thou comest. Suppose the singing birds, musicians, the grass whereon thou treadst, the presents strewed, the flowers, fair ladies, and thy steps no more than a delightful measure or a dance. For gnarling sorrow hath less power to bite the man that mocks at it and sets it light. Oh, who can hold a fire in his hand by thinking on the frosty Caucasus? Or cloy the hungry edge of appetite by bare imagination of a feast? Or wallow naked in December's snow by thinking on fantastic summer's heat? Oh, no. The apprehension of the good gives but the greater feeling to the worse. Come, come, my son. I'll bring thee on thy way. Had I thy youth and cause, I would not stay. Then England's ground, farewell. Sweet soil adieu. My mother and my nurse that bears me yet. Where'er I wander, boast of this I can. Though banished, Yet a true-born Englishman. These high, wild hills and rough, uneven ways draw us out our miles and makes them wearisome. And yet I protest, your fair discourse hath been a sugar, making the hard way sweet and delectable. <laughs> but I bethink me what a weary way from Ravensford to Cotswold shall be found in Exton and Willoughby, wanting your company, which I protest hath very much beguiled the tediousness and process of my travel. Of much less value is my company than your good words. <laughs> but who comes here? Ah, it is my son, young Harry Percy, sent for my brother Worcester whensoever. Harry! Huh? <laughs> How fares your uncle? Well, I had thought my lord to have learned his health of you. Why, is he not with the queen? No, my good lord, he hath forsook the court, broken his staff of office, and dispersed the household of the king. Well, what was his reason? He was not so resolved when last we spake together. Because your lordship was proclaimed traitor. But he, my lord, is gone to Ravenspur to offer service to the Duke of Hereford, and sent me over by Barclay to discover what power the Duke of York had levied there, then with directions to repair to Raven... Have you forgot the Duke of Hereford, boy? No, my good lord. For that is not forgot which ne'er I did remember. To my knowledge, I never in my life did look on him. Then learn to know him now. This is the Duke! My gracious lord, I humbly tender you my service, such as it is, being tender, raw, and young, which elder days shall ripen and confirm to more approved service and desert. I thank thee, gentle Percy, and be sure I count myself in nothing else so happy as in a soul remembering my good friends. And as my fortune ripens with thy love, it shall be still thy true love's recompense. My heart this covenant makes, my hand thus seals it. 
<laughs> How far is to Barclay? Uh, and what stir keeps good old York there with his men of war? Well, there stands the castle, by yon tuft of trees, manned with 300 men, as I have heard. And in it are the lords of York, Barclay, and Seymour, none else of name and noble estimate. Blood and lineaments by you unhappy and disfigured clean. You have in manner with your skillful hours made a divorce betwixt his queen and him, broke the possession of a royal bed, and stained the beauty of a fair queen's cheeks with tears drawn from her eyes by your foul wrong. <coughs> Myself, a prince by fortune of my birth, near to the king in blood, and near in love till you did make him misinterpret me, and stooped my neck under your injuries, and sighed my English breath in foreign clouds, eating the bitter bread of banishment, whilst you have fed upon my seigneuries, disparked my parks, and felled my forest woods. From mine own windows, torn my household coca, raised out my imprees, leaving me no sign save men's opinions and my living blood to show the world I am a gentleman. This and much more, much more than twice all this, condemns you to the death. <laughs> <laughs>